Welcome to this let's have a look at what's in the box of the board game Smartphone published by Arcane Wonders. Let's get straight into it. This is a board game for one to five players. Uh, we have there a look on the front, very stylized, uh, semi-photorealism, I guess, if you want to call it that. Uh, and again, sort of a tech age, we see smartphones uh, around the place, people using them, the factories. So this is a Kickstarter exclusive as well, you can see down there. So I'll just show you that, you can see some of the detail on the artwork, very, very nice indeed. Let's flip it, and there's a lot in here. I'm a bit worried about the packaging inside that it might move a bit, but we'll do our best. So on the top side, it's got the Dice Tower Seal of Excellence. We've got uh, that, so we can put it in our game shelf, board game shelf, that way up. Keeping on flipping it, we've now got that picture. Was that the same as the other side? I think it was. No, it's different colours. So that's blue on the other side. That was red, and it was also on the other side as well. And the final side is similar in terms of you can put it that way up in your board game shelf. He's got a green jacket. If I flip that over, still the same. So I think they're both identical on both of those sides. Okay, let's look at the back as everything's rolling around. Uh, smartphone, we get a picture which shows the board layout. I think every person gets might get one of something, I don't know, and I'm making this up now, so I'll, I'll stop that. Again, Kickstarter exclusive, but that's what it will look like when it's on your table when you're playing it, and that's what's in the box as a list. Let's have a look at the components right now as we flip it over one more, one last time, and spin it round, and then we'll take the top off. So it's an economic board game. Flipping that over, cardboard underside, put that over to one side, and we have an artificial, an AI, Steve, is a rule book. So maybe for solo play, I suspect. So we've got Steve AI there. This is the Kickstarter edition. You can read that, pause it on that side. Four Kickstarter exclusive directives, 30 Kickstarter cardboard markers, scenario markers, hardcore mode, and achievement list. So there you go. So that's what you get in the Kickstarter edition as well. And we'll see that in a in a short while. Smartphone, the achievement list. So as you go through, uh, when you win a game, you build 15 offices, put your name, the date that is there. So that's a nice little thing. I'd probably, I don't know if I'd use that. I really don't like using this sort of stuff, but uh, if you are that type of person, you can. I'd probably actually photocopy it uh, and uh, save this original. That's just what I like to do. Uh, we have here a board which folds out. I played this a long, long time ago, but I can't remember what each board is for. The icons look familiar to me, I can say that much. There's one side of that board, and the other side, that looks like Steve. So I reckon this is the solo board. We have a rule book uh, in an interesting format going sideways like that. Let's have a look at the artwork again. 1.1. Uh, and as I open up, you can sort of see in there the rules, two to three player board module. Uh, we've got this, more of it just going through the recommended tech sets for the first add-on game, etc., etc., which is going on there, and the iconography at the back there. So those are all the icons that you'll encounter. We also have another rule book here. I wonder if that was the Steve module. I don't know, it says an update, updated version. There you go. So this must be the original, and so uh, the updated rules are in, in the other one. So we've got the smartphone rev revolution, the goal of the game. Nice, easy layout to see and find things. We can see there again, a game in progress, the setup that's there. We've even got Steve's components there for the solo or the AI player. Uh, maybe you can use the AI player in multiple people game, games as well, not just solo. Uh, gameplay uh, goes on there. Uh, improved production. Phase 6 logistics. Going through. So page, page 17 out of 24. It is actually a fairly easy game, but as you can imagine, rules aren't necessarily that easy to... Shorten when you want to state exactly what the rules are so you can uh, account for 
every possibility that is there. So that's that rule book. We have also, I think these might be player cards. So we have Sun Tech, Red Berry, Shooting Star, Oasis, and Atlantis as the companies that you can start off with. So uh, we have one, two, three, four, five. So it is for, for one to five players. So they will be given to each player. Uh, I don't know what the difference is. It looks like we've got different starting starting conditions, maybe. That's what that means. We then have all of these bits of cardboard, and these are nice, thick, quality card. Very sturdy indeed. Let's have a look at these, and we'll flip them over so you can see both sides. You can see the variation that you get. That lot there, that final lot. Uh, going on the same sort of thing. Some darker cards. Darker in that background colour anyway. Okay, now we have these double tiles. And I think they go, yep, they match up with our player boards. You see an Atlantis there. So one, two, three, four... And another one somewhere maybe, which, which I'm missing, because it should be five, I think. Anyway, so we'll find that one later on. There's those. We have this. Looks like a, a counter for points. If you pass 100 points, even looks like you can get negative. Wow. Okay, interesting. And we've got one, two, three, four, five uh, the different um, start positions, I'd imagine. Maybe this is start turn order as well. Okay, we have lots of loose stuff in here. This is gonna be, could present as a problem. We'll see as we get these boards out. So this is the world board. Nice thick card again. Uh, it is dual laid, which is why it's so thick. You can see there the indentation right there for a square bit. And I might have to do this off camera. Yes, I am. How am I going to do that bit? Sorry for talking without showing you. So it's a very big board. And that's not coming to part, apart there. So how does that come apart? I think it's just because it's dual layered. I swear it is supposed to unfold further. Okay, so it looks like it does it that way. I'm not getting this apart. Sorry for the extra time, so maybe not. Maybe that is it. Maybe that is the full world board. Maybe I'm overthinking it. It does look like a full world board. Ah, I get it now. So I was thinking it was larger. I think this might be just for a certain number of players, maybe one or two players. I can't see the player count on this board though. So I'll just show you here. If you know if this is one or two player and for the player count, I can't see, look, normally they have like a player count in a corner. I can't see it on this board though. So we're just playing with that. And on the back, it is, as we've already seen, just black. I can see another board in there now. So let's take this other board out. So I accidentally picked these up. Well, seeing I've accidentally picked some of these up, let's look at these tokens. And they are double-sided. Uh, do they look the same on both sides too? So we've got 13, 10, 8, 6. We have the purple. Well, no, they're different on both sides. So we're going to just go through these quickly. Have a look at them. We've got some, some of different lengths there as well. You can see they're of different lengths. There's that one. That one. <coughs> There's a cough. Let's see the sides. Different sides there. Good quality card again. Okay, continuing on. I may not go through every one of these actually now because there are so many that are very fiddly. But I'll give you a sense of what you can find. Again, you can slow it down or pause it as is appropriate for you. You've got all these little tiles and they fit in these little slots here by the looks of it. Well, it's very tight to go in there. So maybe not in those slots, but maybe some other slots, I don't know. 
They'll definitely sort of go over. They look like they should go in those slots. Okay, I'm going to take all of these out now. There's a, a yellow one with a lock on it. And, yeah, just take them out. Take them out. Have a look at them quickly. There we go. Lots and lots of them. So the thing I don't like about this, obviously, is there's really not a good packaging solution for putting these back in the box. As I take out this next board, and this is a larger board, see everything falls falls apart, falls in there. But let's have a look at this board to start off with. And again, this is going to definitely be for a larger play account. Uh, it is dual layered, so you can again, as I sh tried to show you before, you can fit little tiles in there, but they're just not seeming to want to fit in nicely, which probably isn't such a bad thing, because I think if they went in there, they'd be too snug to get out. But we've got places for cubes there as well, by the looks of it. So this is the big board, and it is dual laid. It's creaking a little bit. I'm just a bit scared about the creaking, because I don't want to damage the board at all. As that flips over there and then flips out from underneath. So yeah, this is the, the multi, so like four or five player board, I suspect. Maybe even three players, I don't know. So yeah, big board, you do have to be careful. I'm just feeling some of the backing is peeling away as I do this, and again, because it's dual laid fold out board. But it is a very big board, it's a nice board. Uh, it looks good. I don't know if I can show you all of it. You can see the roots there, the trade roots going off one side and then coming back to the other side over there. Um, so that is that big board. It's black on the other side. As I fold that up and put that away. So you can see there, because it's so heavy, they have had to reinforce that side, but it just feels as though it could come away very easily. So you do have to protect those boards, I think, in this game a bit more. We have some more big cards here. We've seen some of those again. I am not going to go through all of them as much as I'd love to. I just sort of feel that at the moment it's just too fiddly to do. I'll just give you a rundown on some of them so you can get a feel for it. You can see obviously visually how many of these there are. You can also see, as I said before, that the packing solution is not great for this game. And that's something which um, I'm very disappointed they didn't address, given that it's a Kickstarter. And unfortunately, there are a lot of Kickstarters that they start off with certain packaging, they reach their goals, and then they don't think about changing the packaging for the extra components that go in it. It's so important, I think, uh, in modern board gaming to have good uh, pack-away solutions for the games that you produce. Now, that's a bit of an aside while I'm just uh, trying to get a lot of this stuff out. We can see here we do have, what do we have here? I'm going to have to get these out. Again, these just like, they look like they go in these square slots here, if you can see that, but they don't come out very nicely. Uh, so again, that's more on the packaging issue side. Although I do have finger slots where you can stick your finger in there. Now, how am I going to get this off? Again, they didn't really think about this too well. It just feels so jammed in there at the moment. I think once you get one out, it's probably easy to get the rest of them out. So here are some of the cubes that we saw before, cube spots that we saw on the boards, um, some other bits and pieces. Some of the components could go in there, some of our square bits like this could possibly sit there as well, I don't know. So that's the blue one, you could paint that, that model up as well, that'd be quite good I think having them painted up. Let's get the red players stuff out and again there's just the red base it'd be nice to paint that model slightly reddish as well i think that looks identical in fact it is identical to the blue model so it's just the bases which are different in color the, the clip-on bases i probably could have done that some other way but there's the yellow here is the green go there so we've got some buildings some sort of stairs progress and cubes as we said before we have the black so I'm not showing you anything terribly different here and we have a box for some other components now 
I will, when I pack this away, see what goes, what can go in here quite nicely. Uh, this looks like um, the solo components uh, for a solo game. Might be a first player marker, I'm not too sure of that. And we have a couple of other double cubes that are there. Uh, and, oh, even though we didn't get a picture on the top of the box, there's the top of the box and the inside. Interestingly enough, on the base we do. It says red berry there and I, I do like that. I wish they had also managed to put a bit of artwork in the top of the box. But they haven't and that is the way it is. So that is what's in the box for the board game smartphone. You can see there. Um, and thank you very much for joining me. I hope you play this game. If you have played it, maybe write in the comments what you liked about it, what you didn't like about it. It looks a bit more plainer and blander in terms of like some of the artwork, but it is sharp and it is good, I think, for what the game is. That is an economic board game about smartphone distribution around the world. Uh, if you like this, please hit the like button. Please hit the subscribe button as well and share with your friends. My name is Lamond. Thank you for joining me. Signing off now.